Let's go over some of these examples together to simplify exponential expressions. You'll know you're done because there should be no parentheses left. Each variable should only appear once in your final answer. And also you need to reduce any fractions you see that are just numerical fractions. So for part A, we're seeing um, a squared here appearing outside the parentheses. If you look at law number four, this is telling us that that exponent applies to every single factor inside those parentheses. So everything in there is getting squared. So we'll have four still times two squared is four. X cubed squared is X to the sixth. Okay, I'm using law number three to do that one. And then Y squared is Y squared. So only one more step here really to get rid of the parentheses is to multiply. And we have four times four, which is 16. So 16 X to the sixth Y squared. For part B, a little more complicated, a few things going on. Um, first of all, we can reduce this fraction here. 3 twelfths is 1 fourth. And also I'm going to apply this exponent of 3 to everything inside the parentheses. I'm not going to write the 1. We don't really need to write a 1. Um, 2 cubed is 8. Then x cubed, y cubed. So I've applied that exponent um, to every factor inside the parentheses. And then not much else I can do in the denominator here. And now take a look at what's going on here. Um, there's more factors of y in the numerator, so I can just subtract the exponents. 3 minus 2 is 1. There's one factor of y left. There are more uh, factors of x in the denominator. I will still subtract, but I will be keeping three factors of x in the denominator because there are more down there. Um, okay, I'm also seeing uh, 8 over 4. We can go ahead and divide that as well. And that is just going to be 2. Okay, and that looks pretty good. And <clears throat> taking a look at the last one, um, you can do these in a lot of different ways. I would recommend maybe simplifying the entire inside of the parentheses first before worrying about the squared on the outside. Um, because otherwise, you know, squaring everything will make all the numbers larger at this point. So I'm going to work on the inside of the parentheses first. I can't really reduce this fraction. I don't have any common factors. x squared over x is x. y cubed over y to the fifth. There are two additional factors of y in the denominator. So now the inside is more simple. Let's go ahead and square everything. Negative 2 squared will give us a positive 4 x squared, and then 49, y squared squared, y to the fourth power. Negative exponents is a notation that refers to a reciprocal. So here I have all the different variations of what you could see or what you could be dealing with with negative exponents. So for this first example, to change the negative exponents into positive, we simply change our position, um, either move it up or down. The 2 and the 5 do not have exponents, so they do not have to move. The x to the negative 3, I'll move down, make it a positive 3. The y to the negative 3, I'll move up, make it positive 3. On this next example, I'm seeing a negative 2 on the outside of the parentheses. I can just flip the fraction, and that will make it into a positive 2. And then I can square everything inside of the fraction. 81, y to the fourth, 64x squared. And to get rid of the parentheses, I need to multiply by 3. This is a whole number 3, really 3 over 1. So I'm really just multiplying the 3 by the 81. Okay, so that one's completely simplified. Um, last one, um, uh, once again, the 5 does not have an exponent. There's no reason for the 5 to move. This x, y in the bottom, same thing. This is a negative 1, so I can move it down to make it a positive 1. And then in the denominator, I'm seeing x, y times x, y. We can add those exponents together, x squared, y squared. Okay. Next, we're looking at rational numbers as exponents. Rational numbers refer to fractions. So you can see that the denominator refers to a index of a radical. 
So a to the 1 over n is the nth root of a to the first power. We don't usually write that. So let's try some examples. 81 to the 1 half. That's the square root of 81, which we can simplify. It's 9. Negative 32x to the 1 fifth. So there's the fifth root of negative 32x. I know the fifth root of negative 32. It's negative 2. And then the x has to stay inside the radical. ab to the 1 fourth power. That would be the fourth root of ab, which we cannot simplify further. In those examples, the numerator was 1. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Here you see a power of p. It's really the exponent. I would go with this version where you take the root first and then raise to the power. When you take the root first, you're making the number smaller. So I think that's an easier way to do it. I put a note about that right here. Okay, so for doing these, I'll go ahead and take the root first. So this is the fourth root of 16 to the third power. So that would be two to the third power, which is eight. Um, same thing here, the, the index is 2, so it's the square root of 25 to the third power. So 5 to the third power, 125. Um, last one, negative 8 to the 5 thirds, this is the index, so cube root of negative 8 to the fifth power. So negative 2 to the fifth power, negative 32. This last page is your assignment. You're gonna go ahead and complete these either on a tablet or if you can print out the last page, uh, write on it and make it into a PDF. And go ahead and upload it and this will be your assignment for Math 31.